Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Mojtaba and I'm, I'm from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at KU Leuven in Belgium. And I'm a PhD researcher in the field of computational tissue engineering. In this presentation, I want to talk about physics-informed neural network model for cell viability and oxygen consumption of pancreatic islets. Before talking about computational tissue engineering, let me briefly discuss what tissue engineering is aiming to do. In tissue engineering, we are going to develop organs or tissues that are going to replace the missing functionality of an organ inside the human body. So the developed tissue is going to replace an organ and replicate what the organ is, is doing, actually what the organ does. And uh, you know, that kind of picture, that kind of figure is uh, something that you, you usually see when people are talking about tissue engineering, in which you can see that this is a typical workflow of a tissue engineering process. And the step one, you take cells from the patient's body and then you prepare it, step two, and then step three, you add chemical things to it and you prepare it, you add materials, growth factor, this kind of stuff, and then step four, you culture it and you prepare it to be implanted back to the patient's body. And this is the, actually, you know, you can see that it, this contains the cell, the carrier, and growth, factor, growth factors that are actually the building blocks of every uh, tissue engineering process. The application about which we are going to talk in this presentation is related to pancreatic islet transplantation, which is actually one of the best techniques to treat the severe type 1 of diabetes. The process is very similar to what we discussed in a previous slide, and it requires, you can see that we take uh, the, the cells from the donor, from, uh, the, you know, from the, the, the donor body, and then we prepare it, we culture it, and it goes through a tissue engineering process, and then we transplant it or implant it inside the recipient's body. But the problem is, uh, you know, the, the viability of these cultured islets in the tissue engineering process is limited by hypoxia in a situation in which uh, the, the cells that form the, the, the islets, the islet is a group of cells, so the cells die due to lack of oxygen, which is actually a result of lack of vascularization. And pancreatic islets are vulnerable to this problem due to their big size. A proper solution to this problem for the culturing cells and the islets are putting islets inside small devices called wells. And in these wells, you will provide, we can provide oxygen via gradient-driven diffusion. So you can see an example on this figure that, yeah, these are actually the, the, the islets, this uh, yellow, uh, yellow blocks, and then the, uh, inside the micro wells and the wells, and the, this device provide oxygen through the boundary of this, uh, actually, of this device. So the problem that we are going to solve, sort of study and investigate in this work is tuning the culture device such that it prevents hypoxia by providing oxygen. And this is actually solved or studied by via mat constructing mathematical models of oxygen supply and consumption, which can be coupled with vascularization models, and then solving these mathematical models, these transient mathematical equations, by you know, appropriate techniques to simulate, actually to simulate the model. The modeling workflow, which is, uh, you know, a typical workflow for most of the modeling works, is uh, is uh, un converting underlying phenomena to mathematical models, and then these mathematical models to computational models. The underlying phenomena in this regard, in this project, in this case, uh, are oxygen consumption of supply as well as hypoxia and vascularization. And the mathematical models comprise of partial differential equations, mainly reaction diffusion convection and Navier-Stokes to, to model Floyd flow, although I don't want to discuss Floyd flow in this presentation. I will focus mostly on the reaction diffusion part. And the computational model is actually a finite element method to solve these partial differential equations as well as physics physics-informed neural networks that we want to see if they can replace finite element in this regard. 
So for constructing the mathematical model, we convert the biological phenomena into the mathematical forms. And as I said, the mathematical form is actually the famous reaction diffusion convection partial differential equation. So for the oxygen transport equation, it can be like this. That you can see that it, it just tracks the change of concentration of oxygen over time. So it tells you that how, diffusion, how oxygen diffuses, how it gets convected, and how it reacts with the surrounding environment, in this case with glucose and also with other factors in, in, uh, in the, for example, microbials, as well as how it, it, we should consider the crit critical concentration of oxygen. These are all embedded into this uh, reaction term. And then for implementing the computational model, first we need the geometry, we need to construct the geometry. In this case, you can see that it's a circular well, so the well is modeled as a circular thing. It can be also rectangular or any shape, the shape is not important here. And then we apply the appropriate boundary conditions on the surrounding as, you know, sort of oxygen supply. And then we need to discretize the PDEs to be solved inside the computer, inside using some you know, computational codes. And for this, we used finite element method. And there are various techniques to linearize the equations because as you, have, uh, as you saw in the previous slide, the equations are, are non-linear because yeah, you have uh, a sort of multiplication to the concentration of oxygen. So uh, that's the reason that it's not linear, it's sort of non-linear non equation. So we need to linear, linearize it. And there are various techniques for doing that. And we have used uh, Picard relaxation as well as Newton method. We have implemented both and both provide similar results, almost the same results for, for this problem. And these kind of uh, you know, techniques uh, usually require uh, a mesh to begin with. So this is the mesh for, for the problem that we are going to solve. So you can see that we have islets, two domains actually. One is the group of, cell and, group of cells and one is the surrounding. And then, uh, as I said, the equations are nonlinear. So for the, developing this finite element things, usually the nonlinearity becomes a problem. Sometimes, especially if, if you deal with fluid flow, if you deal with you know, nonlinear materials, this can become a problem. But what if you want to develop another technique for solving PDEs? This actually commonly used techniques, as I said, are usually finite element and finite difference. And this, this method uh, worked uh, upon the base, uh, based on, uh, let's say, approximating the, the, uh, the differentiation, uh, differential equations, the fr derivative terms, let's say, and also variational formulation of the equations. What if we want to employ some of the techniques for machine learning? Because machine learning has become a mature technique nowadays, and it seems that we can employ some of these techniques to solve even partial differential equations. And the, the, the the, the, actually, the technique is embedding the physics into, into the ML models. So if we can do that, then we can solve the PD so that, let's say, the, the machine learning model can understand the differential equation. And this actually, this, this has been uh, introduced in, uh, I think, 2017 as a technique called physics informed neural networks. And uh, yeah, this technique tries to do this. Is tries to do this. And we want to see how it works, and then we, we employ it for, to solve our equations. But before that, why do we need physics informed neural networks, a new technique, let's say, while we have sophisticated methods to solve partial differential equations. AI has shown to be, you know, scalable for HPC, for high performance computing applications. And in this regard, you can see that, yeah, this, this could be a handshake of HPC and AI to, to mechanistic modeling. So HPC is a sort of issue, so usually is an issue for mechanistic modeling when we use conventional methods. But in this regard, you know, this, this will be a first class citizen in, in, in the technique that we use. And also we're dealing with nonlinearity, which is actually the case. In this case, we have a nonlinear equation. So for, for these kind of problems, you will see that, yeah, it doesn't matter if the equation is linear or not. And it has easier parameterization for problems because it provides enhanced inverse problem formulation. And it can be used for P 
PD constraint optimization. So we can solve more complex, let's say, optimization problems. And it has also better extensibility in comparison to previous methods. So it's easier to modify the technique and also extend it to, you know, to, to include uh, more parameters and this kind of stuff. This physics informed neural networks are nothing but the traditional MLP models, multi-layer perceptrons, that are quite famous for function approximation, for pattern recognition, this kind of stuff, and supervised uh, machine learning. Uh, in order to train an MLP, a multi-layer perceptron model, we provide input to that, and then we move forward and compute output based on this, the weights that we have initialized for these interconnections. And then we compute the error because we know that what is, the what is the correlated output because it's a sort of supervised learning. And then in a process called backward propagation, we update the weights and we repeat this process iteratively to update the weights several times in several epochs, let's say. And as a result, we have an approximated function. We have a black box that can mimic the behavior of any function. But with, with recent advancements, advancements in machine learning libraries, it's easy and very fast to perform a differentiation on these on this neural network models. And by doing that, you can guess that we can define partial differential equations or ordinary differential equations because we have the function, we can have its derivative, and as a result, we then approximate the differential equation. And this is what the pin, the core idea of pin is actually. So in order to solve PD is using PIN, uh, we can use this, the technique that we discussed. So let's go for it. This is actually the or, per, the or PDE, let's say, that has only the diffusion and reaction term. And C is a function of coordinate system X, Y, and T in, in two, 2D space. This is, a this is a model that can approximate C by having the input of X, Y, and T. And then we can define U such that we move all the terms to, to the left, for example. And then by having that differential, automatic differentiation, we can derive the derivative of the network and calculate U. And in order to increase accuracy, we increase the number of layers and also neurons in each layer. That's uh, you know, another story. I don't want to go to that. I don't want to go to the architecture of the network. But this is actually a deep neural network, let's say. And then in order to train it, we put some input to that, we provide it with some input. But then the question is, what is the output for this? This is a supervised learning. And if you have a look at the PDE, you can see that the U is always zero because we have moved all the terms to the left or right. And this is the way that actually it becomes a supervised learning process. So you can see that this is actually the part that approximates C, and this is the block that approximates U. So, this is actually how it works. And then we need some you know, more steps to, to train it. Now, in order to train it, we need to define the problem, the domain of interest, and initial and boundary conditions. So this is actually the mathematical form of the problem. But in order to track it with these physics and formula networks, let's assume that T is also, because T is a parameter, is an input parameter for the neural network. Let's assume T is also continuous. And then we can see that the problem is actually finding the value of C at any point inside this queue because it's, it, it is actually the coordinate and also the time in which we want to see the value of the concentration. So in order to, to train it, the last step is to compute the error because gradient descent is based upon calculating errors. And this is pretty simple in, this, uh, in these models because we know the value of u. u should be always 0. So this is the first term of, of the you know, error that we can compute. We can pick any point of this cube, put it as the input, and then calculate u. It should be 0. The next thing is from the initial conditions. We know the initial condition, which is actually the this xy plane when t is 0, and we know the value of c, so we can calculate the value and see and compute the error in that way. And also we know the boundary condition. So the boundary condition is also known, and we can you know, compute the error, and this is the third term inside the, the error. So the error is it actually a mean square error, and then it's, it can be calculated based on these three components. 
in order to implement the, uh, the P model, we have used uh, NVIDIA SimNet, which is actually a library uh, on top of TensorFlow uh, for implementing these uh, P models. And uh, we had different reaction diffusion rates for cell and culture conditions, and we use a heavy side formulation to track this. So that was a uh, you know part of implementation what we needed to do because the cells and the environment uh, uh, have different uh, diffusion rates. And then the scaling and normalization is very crucial to sim similar to any other machine learning project and model modeling. You should always normalize the values. So the X, Y, and T should be in range of 0 to 1. And treating with time becomes tricky for larger scales because, yeah, we have assumed that time is continuous. But, yeah, this is, you know, an active field of research to, to, come, to consider time as being discrete and then propose new architectures to, to deal with that. This is how the results uh, look like for the finite element simulation. So let's say traditional numerical schemes. You can see that yeah, for rectangular domain and circular domain, you can see the consumption of oxygen inside the islets and then the supply of oxygen from the surrounding and it reaches a steady state when uh, you know, these two rates become uh, equals. So uh, yeah, this is how it should be. And then this is the pin output. This is the pin model output. You can see that we, in order to post-process it, we have uh, different layers along the z-axis, which is actually the time. And you can see that, yeah, it, it reaches a steady state very fast. And to compare the final output from the final state, let's say final state of the model, when it reaches a steady state, you can see that they are exactly the same in the finite element solver and the P model, also quantitatively. This is for rectangular domain, and this is for the circular domain, demonstrating that, yeah, the P model is capable of solving partial differential equations in this regard and pr producing the same output as the traditional techniques. So in this presentation, we talked about implanting of pancreatic islets into microvels as an efficient way of treating uh, the severe forms of diabetes. And then in order to tune these devices, these microvel devices, we constructed mathematical and computational models to assess the viability of these cells and the way that we can uh, prevent hypoxia by tuning these, these devices. And then we used physics-informed neural network to solve the governing equations, and we demonstrated that they, they produce the same output as the traditional technique to solve these mathematical equations. Thank you so much for your attention. Feel free to reach out if you have any question on this.